Oh, here's the. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, thank you for coming on this beautiful Patriots Day morning. Approaching the bridge now are the Acton Minutemen. Acton holds a special place on Patriots Day. The two colonials who died at the bridge were from Acton. When the colonists advanced from the hillside down to the bridge by the same route that you see Acton marching now, they were in the front to challenge the British regulars. Thank you. 
Please welcome, passing over the North Bridge, the Boxborough Minutemen. While we are awaiting the arrival of the Town of Concord Parade, you are at this time free to cross the North Bridge. We'll leave the area open until the parade arrives. Please remember that um, when the parade arrives, we will then again ask everyone to get behind the rope lines and you, won't, you will not be able to close the bridge. If you have a view towards the field by the old manse, that's on the side of the bridge with the obelisk, the 1837 monument, also called the obelisk. You see the arrival of the Concord Independent Battery. They will be part of the ceremonies this morning. If you have hearing aids, small children, or dogs, Take the extra caution once they're set up and during the ceremony when they fire the cannon, it is very, very loud. Thank you. Fife and Drum, I got to get them to come here, which is actually a change. 4-H was going to be over there and Hanscom Band was going to be here, but we want the kids in the shot because they want kids. So, oh no, what's happening? So uh, anyway, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, anyway, that's the story. So all the British consul will be there, you know, all the honored citizens. So it's after the parade that I go over there, so, to get the British. Um, actually, you could go now. It's up to you, it's up to you. But, but, but here's the thing, the parade comes, all the dignitaries and bands get into position. Then when that's ready, then the British will come in with the Mourn Arms Ceremony. All right. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? At this time, the Town of Concord Parade has arrived at the top of the hillside. At this time, we ask that you get back into one of the viewing areas. You will need to be behind a rope. You can either be behind the ropes on the obelisk side. If that gets too crowded, you can be on the Minuteman side, back behind the rope on the grassy hillside. Also, we found a credit card. If you lost that, please come uh, report to any ranger. Thank you.
Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, we gather in anniversary celebration on this hallowed ground, mindful of the spirit of freedom which inspired the patriotic imagination over two centuries ago. We are grateful for sacrifices made for the greater good of all your people. Help us never to forget that liberty painfully secured in the heat of conflict is seldom kept alive in perpetuity, except for the vigilance, care, concern, and clear conscience of an informed citizenry, one which values community, seeks justice, and constantly works for peace. May the bridge which separated two adversaries over 200 years ago 
be the symbol today of bringing together new generations of people and nations in freedom and mutual understanding in peace and hope working for the common good and striving for the unity of all your people with thankful hearts we together offer this prayer amen thank you reverend lombard at this time i would like to acknowledge the dignitaries that are with us today Marion Thornton, who is the 2008 Con Concord Honored Citizen, representing the White House is Charlene Reynolds, Nancy Nelson, Superintendent of the Minuteman National Historic Park, Representative Nikki Songus, Lieutenant General Ted Bowles, Colonel Tom Shalukbeer of the Air Force, Her Majesty's Consul General David Chung, Japanese Consul Yoishi Suzuki, Members of the Selectman School Committee, Concord Housing Authority, past honored citizens. This year is the 233rd anniversary of the Concord fight. What the school books describe as the Battle of the North Bridge, where colonists faced the British regulars and began the war for American independence. Concord held strategic importance as a storehouse for munitions and supplies for the colonial forces. Town meeting of September 1774 voted to raise a company of local artillery in the town to take care of the cannon when mounted and to engage a master of gunnery to teach the townsfolk needed skills to fire and maintain them. Sign up with Concord Minutemen began in January of 1775. Two more brass cannon were sent to Concord Cannonballs, powder, and shot were collected. The new British commander in Boston felt it essential to restore control over the area by sending troops to capture the stores thought to be hidden here at the farm of James Barrett. When British intentions were discovered, Paul Revere, William Dawes, and Samuel Prescott rode through the night to spread the alarm. The stores and munitions were moved. A British search party on that morning entered the Baird house and fields of the farm, but failed to find the hidden weapons. They returned to the North Bridge where they encountered the Minutemen and the local militia at the seminal battle of the American Revolution. And the rest we say is history. The original farmhouse, which was searched by those British soldiers all those many years ago, still stands today surrounded by farmland which has been continuously farmed since 1775 by the Barrett and the McGrath families, making it one of the most significant historic properties in Concord. Save Our Heritage has accepted the awesome challenge to purchase the farmland and historic house and to hold the property until it can be preserved at last as the final piece of ground where the story began. Meanwhile, the Concord Independent Battery, which began by the vote of town meeting as a small local artillery company, is the oldest horse-drawn artillery unit in America and is celebrating its 204th anniversary. To this day, the Concord Independent Battery is entrusted by the town of Concord with custody of the town's two historic six-pound brass cannons and plays an active and significant role in the celebration of events surrounding April 19th, as well as performing ceremonial functions on both joyful and solemn occasions. We who live in Concord know that it is not a quaint colonial town frozen in time, but a living entity that has been part of the ebb and flow of remarkable choices, great events, and significant triumphs for some 375 years. The everyday people who preceded us have left a legacy of ordinary yet often amazing and compelling stories that compare us to live our lives that also will be full of amazing events, choices, and triumphs in the 21st century. For some of our friends and neighbors beginning in 1775 and continuing today, responding to the challenge of citizenship has also meant a period of service in the armed forces. More than 1,400 men and women from Concord went to 
fight in World War II, and just about 300 each to Korea and to Vietnam. Recently, I've had the sad duty to add the name of the, to the Veterans Memorial of a young man who perished in Iraq. Today, almost a thousand veterans live in Concord, and when we gather to remember the Concord fight, we have an opportunity to honor the men and women who as friends, relatives, neighbors, and comrades served our community and our nation through their triumphs and personal sacrifices. To the veterans here today, we are honored by your presence. To those members in active service in the armed forces joining us today, the Air Force, the Navy, the Marines, the Merchant Marines, and the Army National Guard, we are grateful that you have accepted the challenge of citizenship, and we will continue to strive to create a community and a nation worthy of your choice. The British Grave Mourns Arms Ceremony will now be conducted by the 10th Regiment of Foot. We are pleased to be able to participate in this very beautiful and solemn ceremony. Sangus would like to say a few words. Good morning. Uh, it is my great honor to be here today as we share in this time of origin for this country and in Old Glory's journey of remembrance as we honor those who so bravely fought to create this country and to preserve it and its fundamental freedoms whether by giving their utmost sacrifice, whether by forever changing their lives, and also as we honor their families and communities who supported them so many years ago and throughout our nation's history. Uh, I'd like to let you also know that as one of my first acts of Congress, I filed on Friday legislation uh, to expand the boundary of the National Park to put the most important treasure of Barrett's farm uh, to bring it within that boundary so that we can preserve it for generations to come. So thank you for being here. It's a beautiful spring morning. I think not unlike that one so many years ago. It tells us what a quiet and important moment in our history, one that we should cherish forever. Thank you. This time, Nancy Nelson, superintendent of the Minuteman National Historic Park, will now begin the journey of old glory as the conquered and acted Minutemen bring old glory to the middle of the North Bridge. Thank you, and good morning, everyone. It is my privilege to welcome you today to Minuteman National Historical Park. Today, Concord's traditional Patriot's Day program will incorporate elements of a national program called Old Glory's Journey of Remembrance, which honors and remembers America's fallen who have sacrificed so much in our nation's defense. In a few minutes, as we raise old glory over these hallowed grounds, we will participate in the nationwide journey of a flag, which began on the Hawaiian island of Oahu on December 7, 2007. On that date, on the 66th anniversary of the attack at Pearl Harbor, this same flag was raised over the USS Arizona Memorial in remembrance of the 2,400 Americans who were lost on that catastrophic day in 1941. Today, we are especially honored to have with us veterans of the World War that followed the attack at Pearl Harbor. These are the veterans of our greatest generation, 
those who fought to preserve the nation and advance freedom around the globe during a war fought on a scale not seen before or since. Also with us today are veterans of the Korean, Vietnam, Gulf, Afghanistan, and Iraq wars. Please join me in thanking all of them for their service and for their sacrifice, uh, for their attendance here today. <laughs> Ultimately, this flag will be flown over 27 other nationally significant historic and memorial sites before its journey is done, including Independence Hall, Valley Forge, and Gettysburg. Old Glory's journey of remembrance will be completed on Memorial Day, May 26th, when it will fly proudly over our nation's capital. And on Memorial Day, Americans everywhere will pause at three o'clock for a national moment of remembrance to recognize and to remember the sacrifices made by America's fallen. It is particularly appropriate that Old Glory be raised here, for Minuteman National Historical Park and the North Bridge and Concord are places to remember and places where all of us can be united in our love of country and in our appreciation for all of those who fought and those who died to protect the values and freedoms that we cherish as Americans. For here, in defense of their liberty, the embattled farmers stood and fired the shot heard round the world. We in the National Park Service are proud to join in this commemoration of those who made the supreme sacrifice on our behalf. To each veteran here today, thank you for your service to our nation. And to each guest here today, thank you for your patriotism and for your love of country. Let us each resolve to never forget what our veterans have done. For as long as we remember them and why they serve, their service and sacrifice will never be in vain. Our special thanks today also go to Charlene Reynolds, Chief of Staff for the White House Commission on Remembrance, which organized and made possible Old Glory's Journey of Remembrance. Thank you all. Please rise for the playing of our national anthem by the 4-H Fife and Drum. Proclamation will be read by Margaret Briggs, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Whereas the men and women of the town of Concord throughout our history have proudly served in the armed forces of the United States in defense of our nation and our freedoms and continue to proudly serve today, whereas the residents of Concord join a grateful nation in expressing appreciation for the valor service and sacrifice of the soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coast guardsmen who serve in uniform today. 
And whereas Old Glory's journey of remembrance commenced with the flying of the flag over the USS Arizona Memorial at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, on December 7, 2007, and will be raised over memorial sites in 20 states before flying over the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. on Memorial Day, 2008. And whereas the residents of Concord will commemorate Old Glory's journey of remembrance with the raising of the flag at Minuteman National Historical Park on Monday, April 21st, now therefore, the Board of Selectmen, on behalf of the residents of Concord, do hereby proclaim April 21st, 2008, as Old Glory's Journey of Remembrance Day. Wreaths will now be laid by Parade Marshal Steve Verrill at the Minuteman statue and by British Consul General Dave, David Chung at the British Grave. Taps and Echo will be played by Technical Sergeant Ted Stearns and Senior Airman Laura Kluga from the Hanscom Band of Liberty. And now Nancy Nelson will present the ending remarks for Journey of Old Glory. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us today for this part of Old Glory's nationwide journey. We appreciate your participation as we remember not only the ordinary citizen soldiers who chose liberty over safety at this very site so long ago, but all of America's veterans and what they have achieved in the name of freedom. For, from each of us at Minuteman National Historical Park, it was our honor to have you with us here today. Thank you. The Band of Liberty will now play the Washington Post March as the Minutemen return with old glory out to Monument Street.
parade marshal steve barrel just passed over the north bridge he's a long time resident a farmer engaged in many town activities steve is accompanied by his wife joan daughter jennifer his grandchild and barrel farm employees Citizen today is Marion Thornton, Concord's Honored Citizen of 2008. She is the steward of the Boston Post cane, which she carries in her duties. The cane was originally awarded to the oldest resident, but after a period of being missing, it has been awarded annually to a resident who has provided substantial volunteer service to the town. Thank you, Mary and Thornton. <laughs> the 4-H Fife and Drum Corps is now leaving the bridge area. Thank you very much to them for the national anthem. Our Marine Color Guard, is the Military Ordnance Contact Team, U.S. Marine Corps, led by First Sergeant Robert E. Johnson. The United States Air Force Band of Liberty, under the direction of First Lieutenant Dave Alpar, is stationed at Hanscom Air Force Base. Military bands have a long and illustrious history of performing signals, alarms, and other outdoor ceremonial and concert music. Today, the United States Air Force Band of Liberty Ceremonial Band continues this proud tradition. Located at Hanscom, near the Revolutionary War battlefields, where colonists took up arms in defense of liberty and gave birth to our great nation, the ceremonial band plays an integral part in fostering our American heritage. Thank you to our town dignitaries, members of the Board of Selectmen, the School Committee, and the Housing Authority. And thank you to Reverend John Lombard. Welcome the USNS Concord contingent, representing the United States Naval Ship Concord, Commander Mark Dibble and Navy Sailors Hawthorne, Adams, and Holter have traveled from the Western Pacific to take part in today's parade. Incidentally, the, the United States Air Force Band of Liberty, who performed so well here today, will be featured in a Memorial Day concert in Minuteman National Historical Park at the Minuteman Visitor Center, the visitor center that is out on Route 2A in Lexington. At two o'clock on Monday, May 26, Memorial Day, the Air Force Band of Liberty will be here for a special Memorial Day concert. United States Naval Academy Drum and Bugle Corps.
Brick Bridge, the old Concord chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution. They were founded by Concord's own Harriet Lothrop, who lived in the Wayside, which is now part of Minuteman National Park. She wrote The Five Little Peppers and how they grew in more than 40 other books. The Old Concord chapter is active in promoting education and history, environmental programs, and in recognition and support of our troops and veterans. We welcome, we welcome the Rotary Club of Concord. Service above self is the motto of Rotary International, founded in 1905. Concord's Rotary Club was chartered in 1931 and conducts programs and events for the benefit of the community and Rotary's international programs. Here for the first time in the Concord Parade is the Charlestown Militia. Welcome. I can see that this is the Bedford Minutemen. Thank you. The Bedford Company is led by Captain Chuck Hakala. They're a marching and ceremonial unit dedicated to keeping our colonial heritage alive and honoring the Bedford flag. The first battle flag to fly over the colonials in the revolution. Bedford kicks off the area's Patriots Day celebration each April by hosting a Liberty Pole capping. Concord Minutemen and the Acton Minutemen on the North Bridge. And something very interesting is they had with them today the original Captain, Captain Isaac Davis sword. Isaac Davis was one of the two colonials who fell at the bridge fight. He's well known for urging the militia to defend the town when they were up on the hill and they saw smoke rising from the town. It was Captain Isaac Davis who said, I haven't a man who's afraid to go. And he led the militia and Minutemen. The Acton Company was the first company at the bridge which is why they were the ones to take the worst casualties. So the Acton Minutemen had Isaac Davis's sword with them today. Please welcome the Middlesex County Volunteers under Director Jim McCondiff. The Middlesex County Volunteers Fifes and Drums was established in 1982 to explore the traditional music of the Regimental Fife and Drum Corps associated with the European or American armies during the American War for Independence. Today they perform martial, dance, and folk music drawn from 17th, 18th, and early 19th century sources in America and Europe. Through dress, bearing, musical performance, and spirit, the Middlesex County Volunteers strive to offer an inspirational experience to audiences. They hope that by encouraging the individual to consider our past, they can better prepare for the future.
please welcome the Concord Museum led by Desiree Caldwell. For over 120 years, the Concord Museum has been the gateway to Concord's history for visitors from around the world. With one of the oldest collections of Americana in the country, the museum is known for its national treasures, including the One If By Land, Two If By Sea, 1775 Revere Lantern, the Rose Walden Desk, and Emerson's Study, all with a Concord story to tell. Visit the museum after the parade to learn more about the events of April 19th and join in engaging family activities. Passing now over the North Bridge, the Military Family Support Group. This group was formed in 2005 and has opened to family and friends who anticipate or have a soldier presently deployed. The group offers support, education, and networking for folks who live in Concord and surrounding towns. Veterans, interested citizens, community and military representatives are always welcome. Monthly meetings are held at the West Concord Union Church at 7 p.m. on the third Tuesday. Arriving at the bridge are Cub Scouts Pack 133 under the leadership of Craig Lilly. Here come the Lincoln Minutemen under the direction of Captain Marty Fahey and Drum Major Don Hafner. The Lincoln Minutemen are making their 41st consecutive appearance in the Concord Parade. Rain or shine, after mustering in Lincoln and marching to join the parade, Lincoln's Minutemen, musicians, and colonials are always at the bridge on this April morning. On April 19, 1775, the Lincoln Minutemen responded to the alarm and marched to Concord in defense of self-government. They were the first company of Minutemen to join Concord. They participated in the Battle of North Bridge and in the running fight along Battle Road Today, more than two centuries later, the Lincoln men and men still symbolize the will of a people to defend their right to liberty and self-government. They work to keep history alive by creating and producing colonial history programs for Massachusetts school students teaching fife and drum skills and music to all ages, and by partnering with Minuteman National Historical Park in delivering numerous colonial living and military history programs. Robbie Cunningham of the Lincoln Minutemen is today marching in his 41st Concord Parade. The Corinthian Lodge, now passing over the North Bridge, is one of the oldest Masonic lodges in Massachusetts. They were chartered in 1797 by the then Grand Master of Masons in Massachusetts, Paul Revere. Now on the North Bridge, save our heritage. Save our heritage has accepted the challenge of stewardship of the Barrett farmhouse, searched all those years ago by the British in search of arms. Legislation was recently filed to make the farmhouse part of the Minuteman National Park. We owe a great debt of gratitude to Save Our Heritage for rescuing that priceless treasure. The Fen School Band, led by director Maeve Lynn. Fen School has been participating in Patriots Day events since 1969. 
Ben is the only local student band that marches in the Patriots Day Parade each year. Say hello to Cub Scout Pack 147 from Alcott School in Concord. Here come the Westford Colonial Minutemen, led by Lieutenant Colonel Dan LaCroix. They have participated in the Concord ceremonies since they formed in 1967. Since that time, the group has been dedicated to preserving Westford's proud revolutionary history. Each year, they lead an early morning Patriots Day march from Westford's Common to the North Bridge in commemoration of the 132 Westford men who served on April 19, 1775. The Assabet Village Minutemen, being led today by Robert Patina. to see the first Michigan fife and drum under the direction of Mark Wadsden. They have the honor of having attended Patriots Day celebrations for over two decades. The first Michigan Colonial Fife and Drum Corps were organized in 1974. The uniforms they wear are the uniforms of America's first army. The Corps wears the hunting frock of the militia and portrays the historically accurate uniforms of Morgan's rifles. The large flags carried by the 1st Michigan are historically accurate as well. Core pipe and drums are handmade duplicates of those heard in this area back in 1770. First Nations. This is the debut of First Nations in the Concord Patriots Day Parade. Cultural First Nations are carrying a flag of the Wellamuktuk First Nations people, a Maliseet Native American tribe. The First Nations group is marching with Native friends from many other groups in Massachusetts to commemorate the Native American people who served bravely and fought in the American Revolutionary War, Civil War, and have been a key part of the armed forces that have fought for the freedom of America ever since. We hereby honor our relatives and our people who have sacrificed. The Sons of the American Revolution are commanded by Richard Thorndike. 
The first meeting of the Society of the Sons of the American Revolution was heard in Concord on October 19, 1889, in commemoration of the final surrender of Yorktown. The very first graves marked at the old cemetery were of patriots. Sons of the American Revolution continue the tradition today as graves were marked this morning as they have been every year prior to forming at the parade start. We welcome Cub Scout Pack 31 under the leadership of Terry Suskovich. They are from Shirley, Massachusetts. They're made up of more than 40 boys, age 7 through 11, who work toward traditional scouting ideas. The Concordant Volunteers are now passing over the North Bridge. And they are marching for the Wayside, home of offers. The Concordant Volunteers are a group of young people, ages 11 to 18, from all over Massachusetts, who have been assisting at museums and historic sites for the past 15 years. This Patriots Day, they represent the Wayside. The Wayside was the home of the Muster Master of the Concord Minutemen on April 19, 1775. It later was the first home owned by the Alcott family. It was here, it was here that the childhood events of Little Woman took place. The Wayside was also the only home ever owned by Nathaniel Lofka, uh, sorry, Nathaniel Hawthorne and his family. The Stowe Minutemen are being led today by Captain Rick Lawson. The Stowe Minutemen Company marched to Concord this morning, all the way from Stowe, a distance of approximately 10 miles. For over 40 years, they have marched in Concord's Patriot State Parade. We welcome our next door neighbors, the Old Manse, under the direction of Tom Beardsley. The Old Manse was built in 1770 by the Reverend William Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson's grandfather. For almost 170 years, this shining jewel in Concord's crown served not only as home to Emerson and Hawthorne, but also as home and meeting place to a veritable host of nationally known ministers, writers, artists, and philosophers. Today, this National Historic Landmark is owned and operated by the Trustees of Reservations. If you have a view towards the field next to the old dance, the Concord Independent Battery is leaving to join the parade. The Kron Tara Pipes and Drums, under the direction of Pipe Major Bruce Roberts. They're a competitive Highland Pipe Band based in the Boston area. Say hello to the Concord Girl Scouts. The Concord Carlisle Girl Scouts enjoy marching in this and other parades in both towns. We appreciate the opportunity to help our community celebrate its heritage. Their membership is currently around 450 girls, aged from 6 to 18. 
They are involved in camping, eco-friendly projects, exploring their communities, and, and the world through badge work and field trips. The Girl Scouts are 96 years old and still growing. Orchard House on the North Bridge now, the home of Little Women, Louisa May Alcott's Orchard House is representative by, represented by Executive Director Jan Turnquist, portraying today Louisa May Alcott, and a host of volunteers in period dress. Orchard House sheltered praying Indians during King Philip's War, housed a conquered Minuteman during the Revolutionary War, and was home to the Alcott family for 20 years in the 19th century. Open since 1911 for guided tours, educational programs, and special events, Orchard House welcomes nearly 50,000 visitors annually from around the world and is proud to be in Concord's Patriot Day Parade. Well, now I can read their flag and I see that they are Troop 135. Welcome. Cub Scouts Pack 1728 is led by Cub Master Clint Hollis. They've come visit us today from Lunenburg. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everybody. We request that the spectators leave a respectful gap behind the end of the parade. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Hope you had a nice morning. We're all very happy to have had you here. Thank you.
Second line, commanded by Colonel Todd Gerlander.
Good story. Uh, up to Dahlgren, which is just outside of Fredericksburg. 